From real-life spirit walks to moving tales of heroism, this is our list of the top 8 movie characters you didn't know were based on real people. Stay tuned to find out which of our characters was forced to amputate a part of his own body. Number 8. King Leonidas 300 The year is 480 BC. The massive Persian Empire is closing in on the free states of Greece. In the north, Athens is home of democracy and the western world's best chance for freedom to extend into the future. And yet, Athens and the rest of the Greek states are divided. And if Persia is allowed to make landfall and invade mainland Greece, then hundreds of years of wisdom and free thinking could be lost before they're ever allowed to grow and flourish. Further south, the Greek city-state of Sparta angers and denies the Persians' demand for submission. War ensues, and soon the Persian ships are making groundfall at the nearby coastal pass of Thermopylae. This is the setting for the movie 300, which was based on the real-life Battle of Thermopylae, which took place in 480 BC. The movie dramatizes and makes things a bit more simple and theatrical than the reality of battle between 300 Spartans and an army of Persians. And yes, there really were 300 Spartans that made one of history's most famous last stands in a small, narrow valley against the much larger force of the Persians. However, when King Leonidas and his Spartans were cornered, there were actually 1,100 other Greek soldiers who died fighting by their side. And before that, there were over 7,000 men under Leonidas's command. It was only after the Spartan king realized that the Greeks would lose to Persia that he pulled back his army into a small coastal valley and dismissed the bulk of his men before fighting to the heroic death, giving the rest of the Greek forces time to retreat. Number 7. Spartacus The 1960s production of Spartacus is an epic tale that reminds us of the true price of freedom. The movie's title character, Spartacus, is a man who was born into slavery. After a time, Spartacus is sold to a gladiator trainer and spends weeks training in the harshest of conditions side by side with other slaves. Tired of a life of servitude and with his newfound combat skills, Spartacus turns on his masters and rallies the rest of the gladiators into rebellion. The rebels escape and sweep the countryside, being joined by other like-minded slaves who thirst for a fresh drink from the cup of freedom. With Spartacus at the head of their forces, the slaves make their way further south into Italy where they cross the sea and seek freedom across the waters. In the real world, there are many things we don't actually know about Spartacus. Historians generally agree that he was a one-time Roman soldier who was then sold into slavery. It was then that he became an indentured gladiator, and during his freedom, the real-life Spartacus, just like his movie counterpart, convinced fellow slaves to fight their way to freedom, which they did by seizing kitchen utensils and then stealing carts of other gladiator equipment. Spartacus is said to have been a great military leader and led the men under his command to a number of victories against the highly trained, highly effective, and brutally powerful Roman legions. Number 6. Hachi, A Dog's Tale Hachi, A Dog's Tale is a cult classic that many look upon favorably. In the movie, a professor named Parker Wilson finds an abandoned dog on the tracks of a local railroad station. The dog's owner can't be found and the man ends up adopting the small dog. Over the next year, Professor Wilson and the dog, who he names Hachi, become very close. Hachi doesn't act quite like normal dogs. I mean, he doesn't do tricks or he doesn't perform for others, but he is very loyal. The dog follows his master to the train station every day and waits for him to return from work. One day though, Hachi's master never comes home, and the dog never leaves the train station. He refuses not to find his owner, even though he knows it will probably never happen. The movie was based on the story of a dog named Hachiko, a dog that was born somewhere around 1920. The story goes that when Hachiko's master died in 1925, the dog would visit the train station every day for over nine years until he died in the March of 1935. In modern times, a statue of Hachiko sits on the Shibuya train station in honor of the dog's overwhelmingly strong love and loyalty, and the movie Hachi, A Dog's Tell also pays homage to the unwavering canine. Number 5. Mickey Ward, The Fighter Mickey Ward was a fighter on the decline. He was training hard, but he just can't seem to score a win. 
Finally, after a brutal fight nearly kills him, Ward decides to try and move away from his family, who had been training him for the majority of his career. He abandons his mother, who had previously been his manager, and his brother, who was serving as his trainer for a number of years, and who had also once been a gifted boxer himself. Despite this betrayal of those who loved him, Ward goes on to become a contender for the world title, giving him one last opportunity to shoot for greatness and bring his family into the light with him. The movie The Fighter was based on the life of Irish Mickey Ward, a one-time underdog who boxed during the 1980s and early 2000s. Ward was known for his relentless pressure fighting style and his indomitable will. Ward took a break from the sport to get surgery on his right hand, which had been weakened from all of his years of battling in the ring. But after his return, Ward won the WBU welterweight world title in the year 2000. The fighter chronicles the early career of this legend. Number four, Oscar Schindler, Schindler's List. The year is 1939. World War II is just beginning and the Nazi party holds a death grip on Germany, standing poised to extend its grasp into other neighboring territories. Meanwhile, a businessman arrives in the city of Krakow around the same time. Oscar Schindler sees an opportunity to make his fortune off of the atrocities of the time that are taking place within Germany. This man joins the Nazi party in order to gain political favor and then staffs his factory with the Jewish workers for cheap labor. As the administration of Germany begins to commit genocide against the Jews though, Schindler sees the atrocities being committed by the Nazi party and springs into action to protect his workers. Okay, at first it was only to protect his profits, but slowly Oscar Schindler began to realize the importance of the lives he was saving. Schindler's List was based on the life of the famous member of the Nazi party who saved over a thousand Jewish people by allowing them to work in his production factories under the guise of cheap labor. Today, he's memorialized by the Jewish people for his efforts in freeing them from the Nazi grasp. Number three, Christy Brown, My Left Foot. My Left Foot is a story of overcoming hardship and fighting for a life worth living. Christy Brown was born with cerebral palsy and is a spastic quadriplegic. He can barely move his body, making him, for all intents and purposes, paralyzed. Very few people expected much from Christy. Well, no one but his determined mother. She was willing to do anything and look for any way for Christy to live a good and happy life. So when Christy showed a stunning capability to use his left foot to draw with chalk at the age of five years old, his mother did everything to encourage her boy to use the talent that he had been given. Christie, along with the support of his mother, was able to become an accomplished artist, poet, and writer, all while only being able to use his left foot. The real Christie Brown was born in the 1930s and was only ever able to write and paint with the toes on one of his feet. His most famous work, a book that carries the same name of a movie that immortalizes him, is the work from which my left foot was inspired. If Christie's able to do all of that with just his left foot, think of what you can accomplish. Number two, Christopher McCandless, Into the Wild. A top athlete, the heir to a wealthy couple, and a student with perfect marks. Christopher McCandless is a man who seems to have access to everything and no barriers to his future. Perhaps a bit oddly though, Christopher instead chooses to donate all of his money to charity, give up all of his worldly possessions, and then sets out on an adventure to the Alaskan wilderness. The real Christopher McCandless was a man who graduated from Emory University. Many of those from Christopher's early life say that he marched to the beat of his own drum, although they also state that he was a very gifted person. After graduating from college, McCandless gave away most of his possessions and set off for Alaska. Unfortunately, he was discovered a number of months later weighing only 66 pounds and having died from what most experts agree to have likely have been starvation. Number one, Aaron Ralston, 127 hours. 127 Hours is a movie that deals with the fact that tragedy can strike our lives indiscriminately, whenever and however it chooses, even in the most unpredictable of ways. The movie begins with a hiker and lover of the outdoors named Aaron Ralston exploring the canyons of Utah. Ralston becomes trapped when a boulder falls on his arm and pins him in between a literal rock and a hard place in a tiny slot canyon. Exhausting all of his methods to escape, he finally determines there's no way for him to get out, so he decides to wait it out, hoping that eventually help will come. The movie follows along the man's memories as he examines his life and tries to come to terms with the fact that it might be over. In the end though, he refuses to let it end like that 
And there's only one thing in between him and his freedom, his trapped arm. The real story of Ralston is similar to the movie adaptation. In 2003, the man had gone hiking near an old canyon that once had been used as an outlaw's hideaway. But by a bad turn of event, a boulder became dislodged when he was scaling the walls of the canyon. Ralston's arm became trapped against the walls of the rocks that he had been climbing, meaning that there was no hope for escape. He struggled to free himself for the same number of hours that the movie suggested before he was forced to use the now dull blade of a multi-tool to sever his own arm. In a very gruesome and agonizing amputation, the man made away with his life. In his book, Between a Rock and a Hard Place, directors found the inspiration for the movie 127 Hours. Do you have any other favorite movie characters that are based on real life? We'd love to hear about them in the comments below. As always, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.